Bet one, bet them all. This is Sprawl on Call, and I'm your host, C. Rich. Today we are going to discuss a little bit of pound-for-pound pound rankings between the UFC and Bellator. Uh, Bellator, some of you might not know, uh, they are the number two MMA organization um, right now in the United States. I'm not sure. I didn't want to say world because 1FC could, uh, you know, could have higher, but uh, in, the, in, in the U.S., definitely. Um, Today I want to just uh, point out a few fighters that uh, I do wish were in the UFC and or easily will be or just depending on how Bellator wants to, uh, Scott Coker wants to pay them out. Uh, so we'll see. First, um, you know, we're, we're just going to go down a uh, little through the weight class. We're going to talk about 145 right now, featherweight. Um. Well, first of all, Georgie Kanaharian is injured against his title fight against Patricio Pitbull Ferreira. Uh, if you don't know, uh, Pitbull is a 23 and 2 fighter, uh, while Georgie is a 24 and 4. He's been around a little more, a little longer. Um, yes, uh, so I'm really kind of butthurt about that when I really wanted to see it. Uh, Georgie uh, was actually the World Series of Fighting champion. Uh, then he had he had uh, taken an opponent down, broke his rib while he was doing it, and then lost uh, to retirement in the second round. A lot of people don't know that unless you research it and you just think Georgie got his butt kicked. Uh, then we got, well, Pitbull, Patricio Pitbull. Uh, don't mix him up with Patrice Pitbull, his brother, who is also in Bellator. And, uh, man, these, these guys knock a, knock a punch. But uh, he's right, he currently right now is the champion. Uh, rightfully so. Um, very good fighter. And uh, I could easily see both of these guys looking at the, the pound for pound in, in the 145 division. Uh I mean, we're probably looking at our, our number four, five, and six ranked fighters easily that aren't in the UFC. That would easily be ranked that for them. Uh, Daniel Strauss, he's another one, too. Uh, the guy's 22 and 6. Unfortunately, he likes to lose in the fourth and the fifth round to rear naked chokes after completely dominating fights. Um, so hopefully he'll work that one out. But he did have uh, dreadlocks before too and he had to cut them for a fight one time uh i do believe yep that's when he got submitted in the fifth round <laughs> but uh then we're gonna move on to uh the 155 will brooks uh, nickname used to be i will so it was will i will brooks uh this guy is 16 and 1 everyone uh I stressed him in my Bellator last video, Hardcore, because the guy only has gotten better every fight. Every fight. This kid, he even tells you at the weigh-ins, you will not break me. You cannot break me. And I love it. This guy has such a good positive energy flow that goes just all, all around him. And uh, I could, he's easily top five. He, he, I do believe, would easily be a top 5, 155 uh, contender. Very firm and strong. Um, I mean, uh, he's now in the UFC, but Ben Saunders, this guy's really good, too. Uh, you should check him out whenever he fights next. He got Joe Riggs hurt himself in the last fight against him, and he hasn't fought since. But uh, Ben Saunders at 170 is... Uh, he is a really good fighter and a veteran of the sport. But the real person I'd like to talk about in the 170 division is the... Uh, I think this guy could pretty much be the champ in the UFC at 170, uh, or at least top three. Uh, Douglas Lima. We're not talking about Diego Lima, his younger brother, the one who got knocked out by Tim Means and uh, he's already got a couple losses, lost the ultimate the ultimate fighter he was in. I think it was 20 by Eddie Truck Gordon. Um, Douglas Lima, this guy, he's 
26 and 5 record. However, his losses came early in his career, and he has just been dominating for the past five years, I believe. Uh, no one can, if, if you want to talk about Jose Aldo's leg kicks, those ain't nothing. Those are nothing compared to Douglas Lima's. Uh, this guy literally is a lumberjack if you want to speak about chopping people down. Uh, I, I do easily believe he would be top three in the UFC. Uh, however, he's not even, he can't even fight that much because no one, no one even like gets close to being worthy of challenging him. He's like the John Jones of Bellator. <sighs> yes, some people have a negative aspect on Bellator because they're like, Eddie Alvarez, he was supposed to be all this and that, and he came over to UFC and Donald Cerrone clear beat him. And then, <sighs> I think someone else beat him too. Well, the thing is, Eddie Alvarez... <sighs> top 10 fighter? In the UFC for his division? Yes. I can see that in the 155. But man, is that a steep contest. Especially in your first fight, putting him up against Alan Roney. Come on. Bad move on him. I think he was making a little more money, probably, in Bellator. Uh, you know, and, and besides Pat Curran in that weight division, no one else could really touch him. So, uh... Rick Hahn, he's also another 170 out there. Uh, he's been around the sport a long time. He won't ever get to the UFC. But, you know, I'm not going to count that out. Because I, I think if he does win, like, maybe two more fights, the UFC might sign him to, like, a three-fight contract. Uh, the guy was a freaking, like, minus 500 in his last fight. He left Bellator. His contract was up. He went and fought in Titan F or, uh, yeah, in Titan FC. And then his last fight was in... Uh, CES MMA, I don't know what that was, uh, but I, I know he was like a 5-1 to favorite for that one too. I would like to see his dream come true because he really does want to fight in the UFC one day, and the guy's 38. So give him a give him a three-fight contract. He's not injury-prone at all, and he's a judo world champion. Like, the guy's worthy of, uh, of getting a fight, man. Come on, Dana. Um, but, uh, yeah, hey, thanks guys for watching, uh, please like the page, subscribe, if, uh, if you have any comments about anything of, uh, of any sort, please let me know. I would be more than happy to assist you in a, uh, discussion or a comment or even a negative feed. Hey, everyone likes hate mail. I get a good chuckle out of it. Uh, but hey, until next time, this is Scrawl and Call, I am C. Rich, and don't blow your bankrolls, and always have a good time, guys.